All right, so looking at section 3.5, we're going to start it today. We'll finish it up tomorrow. Uh, first few things we're going to look at, finding domains of rational functions. We are going to look at some arrow notation um, and how that applies to vertical and horizontal asymptotes. We're going to be able to identify those asymptotes from our equation. And we're going to look at, for today, how we can take a basic graph and transform it, all right, shifting it left, right, up, down like we've done in the past. Um, tomorrow we'll get to more of the confusing rational functions. We're going to have some pretty basic ones today. Um, and we'll look at how do we actually find those slant asymptotes and what we can do with those. Okay? We are going to jump around a little bit. Like I said, we're going to start with our horizontal asymptotes. Yesterday in um, class you did the Desmos activity. When you are finding a horizontal asymptote or listing telling me what it is, make sure you put it in equation format. So your answer should be y equals some number. Okay? All horizontal asymptotes are going to be y equals something. All vertical asymptotes will be x equals something. Okay? It's a vertical and horizontal line. So it says if you have this function, now our function here looks really complicated. It's our generic way of showing a rational function. Rational function just means it's a ratio, right? Some kind of quotient. You're dividing one polynomial by another polynomial, okay? For our example here, n is the degree of the numerator and m is the degree of the denominator. We're going to reference those in our explanation here. So n, think of numerator, okay, degree of the numerator. m is degree of the denominator. Before we started the recording, we just reviewed the three scenarios. What happens when n is smaller than m? Again, go back to what those mean. When the degree of the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denominator, or bigger on bottom, if you want to think of it that way. What does that tell me? Yes, we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, which is also the x-axis. What happens when n equals m? So the degree of the numerator is the same as the degree of the denominator then what do we do? Do we have a horizontal asymptote? If the degrees match. Yes, but it's not at zero anymore, right? It moves to where? Right, we use the leading coefficients. In our example up here, the leading coefficients say a sub m and b sub m. We're just going to take the two numbers, those front coefficients, and divide them. What happens if the degree on top in the numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator? In terms of a horizontal asymptote, what happens? If the top is big, we just reviewed this, guys. If the top is smaller, we have one at zero. If they're the same, we use the leading coefficients. If the top is bigger, it could be a slant asymptote, right, if they differ by one. But for sure, we have no horizontal asymptote, right? So it's going to be really important that you can distinguish those three different scenarios. If the top is too small, it goes at 0, y equals 0. If they are the same degree, we're using leading coefficients. If the top is too big, the degree on the top is bigger than the degree in the denominator, then we don't have one. Okay? So we are going to look at finding the horizontal asymptotes for these three. Our first one. What do we notice about the degrees? 
They are the same. So if the degrees are the same, we go to, and use leading coefficients. My board's off again. Use leading coefficients. So what are the leading coefficients in this case? The 9 and the 3? All right, so we would say we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 9 over 3. 9 over 3 reduces to just a 3. So my asymptote would be y equals 3. Okay. Looking at the second one, what do we notice about the degrees? What? Okay, denominator's bigger. All right. Top is smaller, denominator is bigger, however you want to say it. What does that tell me? I have one at y equals 0. Yep. All right. Our third case, what do we know about the degrees? Top is bigger. All right, I'm going to have to pause the recording here and fix my board. Maybe. All right, here we said the top is bigger which means no horizontal asymptote? Yes? Okay. So that is one of the characteristics that we will be using to make our graphs. We're going to look at the degrees and help us decide what kind of horizontal asymptotes we have. All right, let's go back because we have a few other details we want to fill in. So in your Desmos activity yesterday, we did not look at vertical asymptotes and holes and all of that. So we're going to go back and look at that. Remember, we talked about rational functions just being a ratio. All right, we have two polynomials, one in the numerator, one in the denominator. When we talked about domains before, we had two situations where we had to worry about what um, restrictions we had to put on the, on the domain. Do you remember the two scenarios? Square roots, which we said couldn't be negative inside, right? Can't square root negatives. Um, we won't encounter those with rational functions. Okay, what was the other restriction? Zero in the denominator. That's what we have to worry about here. Because with a rational function, we always have a denominator. So our domain will be all real numbers except those x values that make the denominator equal zero. All right, so the one notation I want you to put in here, make sure you factor the denominators so that you can tell what's going to make them zero. All right, that's the easiest way to do this. So can we factor the first denominator at all? Or is it okay the way it is? Denominator? Just the denominator. I'm not worried about the numerators right now. We'll get to that in a few minutes. Denominator, x minus 5. We're okay? It's as factors as it can be. What would make it 0? So we want to skip over 5, right? We can use everything but 5. So we would say we're going from negative infinity up to 5, but we're going to jump over that value of 5. Rounded brackets mean we don't include it. Okay? For our second one, this one can be factored. x squared minus 25 factors into what? 
Okay. So now we have two numbers that we have to jump over. We can't use 5 or negative 5. So starting at the far left, we're going to go from negative infinity. We'd hit negative 5 first. So we'll jump over negative 5. Then we're going to continue on to positive 5 and jump over that. And then continue on to infinity. Okay, so we've eliminated a negative 5 and a positive 5. Our third example, the denominator is x squared plus 25. That can't be factored using real numbers. Okay, so looking at x squared plus 25, it, the only way that would be 0 is if x squared was equal to a negative 25. Yes? Can x squared ever be negative 25? No, as soon as you square something, it turns positive, right? Or zero. So since it can't be negative 25, there's nothing that would make the denominator zero. We can use everything from negative infinity to positive infinity. All real numbers. All right, for our last one, take a second and factor that denominator. What did you get for factors? X plus 8, X minus 5. So what are the two values that we have to jump over? Careful. Negative 8 and positive 5. Sorry. You are right. This should be X minus 8, X plus 5. There we go. Okay. So we have to jump over. Positive 8 and negative 5. All right. So let's start at negative infinity. We'd hit negative 5 first, so we'll jump over that. Go to positive 8 and jump over that, and then continue. All right. Questions about domain? All right, so an asymptote, we talked about this yesterday. An asymptote is a value that makes, that we have to skip over, right? A, a line could be vertical, horizontal, could be a slant asymptote, but it's a line that your graph's approaching as you move far away from zero. So it was moved to the far left or far right, okay? A line or value that a function approaches as you move away from the origin. So our emphasis yesterday was on the horizontal asymptotes. Now we're going to start looking at other ones. Okay. We are going to look at two pretty basic rational functions, just y equals 1 over x, y equals 1 over x squared. We're going to look at the shapes of those graphs and what that can tell us. For our first one, y equals 1 over x, what would my domain restriction be? x can't be 0. So on my t-chart here, I did put a 0. I'm going to put a blank for y. All right, we cannot be at 0. There won't be any value there. What happens if I put a negative 2 in for x? What do I get for y? Negative 1 half, okay? If I put a negative 1 in? Negative 1. What happens if I put a negative 1 half in? Now I have 1 divided by negative 1 half. Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So dividing by negative 1 half is really the same as multiplying by negative 2. So 1 times negative 2 would be negative 2. Okay. What about for the positive values? What would be 1 divided by 1 half? It would be positive 2. 
1 divided by 1 and 1 divided by 2. All right, take a minute and plot those points. You should have three little dots on either side of your axes there, quadrant one and quadrant three. Now, we've talked about horizontal asymptotes already. Where would the horizontal asymptote be for this one? Our top degree is zero, our bottom degree is one. Yes? So top is smaller, we should have a horizontal asymptote at zero. Does it look like that's what we're seeing? Yes. We have a branch here. Should be approaching both the x and the y axes. We're going to go ahead and do the next graph, and then we'll start looking at this arrow notation that we have. We're going to use the same x values that we used in the previous one, so negative 2, negative 1, negative 1 half. Can we have x equaling 0 on this one? No? Okay, same reason. Denominator can't be 0. Would we have a horizontal asymptote still at zero? If you look at the degrees, the top degree here is zero, bottom degree is two. So top is smaller, we'd still have a horizontal at zero. Okay, what happens if we put in a negative two for x? When we square it, it turns into a four. So we're going to get one fourth. Would we get the same answer if we plugged in a positive 2? Yes. Okay. What if we put in a 1 or a negative 1? When we square it, it becomes positive 1. 1 divided by 1 is 1. And what happens if we put in a positive or negative 1 half? Squaring it's going to turn it positive. What happens when you square 1 half? We square the numerator and denominator. So 1 half times 1 half becomes 1 fourth, half of a half. So we have 1 divided by 1 fourth, which turns into a 4. All right, so plotting those points, negative 1 half, we're up at 4. Positive 1 half, we're at 4. Negative 1, we're at 1. Positive 1, 1. And negative 1 half, sorry, negative 2, we're at 1 fourth. And positive 2, we're at 1 fourth. So instead of having branches in quadrants 1 and 3, we have them in quadrants 1 and 2. Okay? Everything is going to be positive for y because of that square. So again, we said we should have a horizontal asymptote at zero. Does it look like we do? Okay. We also said that we can't equal zero in either of them. So that is a vertical asymptote, right? Our graph is approaching x equals zero the y-axis, but never getting there. All right, so some notation that you're going to see. We've used something similar to this with that limit notation. Okay, we're going to look at what happens as x approaches 0. But notice the little positive and negative signs after it. What that means we're just referring to, are we approaching it from a positive side or a negative side? So zero with a little negative next to it means we're coming close to zero, but on the left or negative side. 
And a zero with a little plus sign means we're approaching zero from the positive or right side. Okay. So what happens on this first graph as I come close to zero from the negative side? So as I'm moving this way, where is my graph going? Where's my y value going? The closer I get to zero on the negative side, I'm going down here, right? Towards negative infinity? Yes? Okay. What happens as I approach zero on the right side? So as x gets closer this way, my y values are going up. Okay. So as I approach zero from the left, we said we're heading towards negative infinity. And as I approach zero from the right, we are headed towards positive infinity. Anytime your y value is going either positive or negative infinity as you approach a value, you have a vertical asymptote there. All right, so we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. What happens as x goes towards negative and positive infinity. So now instead of moving close to the origin, we're moving far away from it. So as we go towards negative infinity, as we move far to the left, where is my graph going? As x goes towards negative infinity, my graph is coming up this way, correct? And it's approaching what horizontal level? Zero? Okay. What happens as I go close? I go closer and closer to positive infinity. So as I go to the right, my graph is coming down and approaching zero on the top side. So as I go far to the left or far to the right, this is telling me I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. All right, I want you to take a minute and look at our next graph. I'm going to pause the recording for a minute. Talk at your tables. As you approach each of those values for x, what is your y value doing? All right, let's check our work. As we approach the origin from the left side, the negative side, where is my graph, my y value going? It's going up. As I approach it from the right side, my graph is going up again. So in both of these cases, you should have had a positive infinity symbol. Okay? As we approach negative infinity for x, as I move far to the left side, my y values are coming down and leveling off at what value? At 0. What happens on the right side? Same thing. I'm approaching 0. Okay. All right, so what we are going to do is we're going to take those two graphs that we just did and we're going to transform them, okay? So what I'd like you to do, we have graphs of both of those on the previous page, yes? So take a minute and just transfer those points to these two graphs. Don't draw in the graph, all right, don't connect the dots. Just place your dots in there. All right, so we've got our basic parent function. Now, if you think about all the transformations we've done in the past, what kind of transformations do you see on this one? We're starting with 1 over x, right, that basic graph. What happens when I subtract a 2 from the x value? Which way does it move? Right 2? Okay, 
And if I add a 3 at the end, it moves up 3. Okay. Now, for our original graph, we said we had a horizontal asymptote at 0, correct? And a vertical one at x equaling 0. So y equals 0, x equals 0. When we take our, our points and we shift them right to and up 3, the asymptotes go with them. Okay, the same lines that they were approaching get moved with the points. So this vertical asymptote, when I move it right to, is going to land here. The horizontal asymptote, when I move it up 3, is going to move up to here. Okay, so I have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2, and I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 3. I'm getting those right from the transformations. Now, we know the shape of our graph, right? It was in quadrants 1 and 3, a little curve approaching the asymptotes, yes? So, when we go to move those points, if I take the point 1, 1 and shift it right to and up 3, it lands there. Yes? If I point, take the point 1 half 2, move it right 2 and up 1, 2, 3, it lands there. And if I take the point 2, 1 half, right 2, up 1, 2, 3, it lands there. So it's the same curve, right? I've just picked it up and moved it right and up. So I'm going to have a branch here. And then my other branch will be in here. Yes? It's going to look the same. We've just shifted its position on the graph. All right, same with this one. We had asymptotes where the axes are. Which way are we moving them? What does this tell me? I'm starting with 1 over x squared, right? What does adding that extra plus 1 in there do? Left 1, okay? So the transformation here would be left 1 and down 4, okay? So we're going to move our vertical asymptote left 1, lands here. at x equals negative 1. We're going to move our horizontal asymptote down 4. So we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 4. Yes? All right. We're going to move two points. We'll move the easy ones. 1, 1. I'm going to move it left 1 and down 4. It's going to land there. If I move negative 1, 1, left 1 and down 4, lands there. And I know my branch looked like this. Okay. So the last piece is, how do we find the vertical asymptotes from the equation? All right, without actually seeing the graph of it and knowing it's approaching that value. Vertical asymptote is always x equals a number. It's where the function increases or decreases without bounds as x approaches that value. Without bounds means we're heading towards infinity or negative infinity. It's just going to keep going. Our domain and our vertical asymptotes are tied together. Okay? Domain is what the values that x can never hit. So if we have a vertical asymptote, it's a line that we're trying to approach, but we're never going to quite get there. Okay? So we start by looking at what makes the denominator 0. 
In order to do that, we now have to factor both numerator and denominator because any domain restrictions are going to create one of two situations. If it's a factor that we can cancel out, it creates a whole. If it's a factor that doesn't go away, it's a vertical asymptote. I'm going to pause the recording for a minute, let you finish writing that. All right, so how we are going to figure out our vertical asymptotes and holes? We factor everything, numerator, denominator. Okay, so in the first one, what can I do to factor this? Denominator becomes good. Okay, let's go ahead and just factor all of them here. This one factors the denominator into x plus 3, x minus 3. And our last one here, numerator can factor into x plus 2, x minus 2. Okay, so if we're finding vertical asymptotes or holes, we factor everything to start. Looking at domain restrictions, in the first one, x can't equal what? 1 or negative 1, correct? So what we have to do is decide, is that value going to be a vertical asymptote or is it simply going to be a hole in my graph? Okay. Now, a vertical asymptote, we said, as we approach that vertical line, we are either going towards positive infinity or negative infinity, right? We're approaching, we're increasing or decreasing without bound. A hole is just one little point on our graph that we can't be at. Okay, it's not a whole vertical line that we're approaching. To distinguish between the two, we have to decide, is it something we can get rid of? If we have a factor in the numerator and denominator that match, we can cancel them out. That means it leaves a hole. Okay, the way I think of it is you can fill a hole, right? We can get rid of that domain restriction by canceling out those two factors. We can get rid of a hole by filling it with dirt. Okay, if you can remove it, it's a hole. If you can't get rid of it, it stays a vertical asymptote. Okay, so looking at our example here, is there a factor in the numerator that would cancel with the denominator? And we can't get rid of anything. So we have no holes. We are going to have vertical asymptotes at both of those values, at x equals negative 1 and x equals positive 1. So this graph would have two vertical asymptotes. Okay. Our second example, what can x not equal? Negative 3 or positive 3? Okay. So we have two things we got to worry about, negative 3, positive 3. Can we reduce out anything? The x minus 3. So I can remove this, okay? This function now becomes 1 over x plus 3 in its simplified form. So the one that I got rid of leaves a little hole. The one I can't get rid of leaves a vertical asymptote. So I can't get rid of this x plus 3. It's still in the denominator. So x cannot be negative 3. It is a vertical asymptote. So x equaling negative 3 is going to be a line that we approach, but we can never get to. Because we got rid of this x minus 3 piece, that restriction where x is 3 is a hole instead of a vertical asymptote. We can get rid of it. All right, our last example. Can we get rid of anything? Yes. So what would this function look like if we reduced it? Just a plain x plus 2? Okay. What was the restriction? When we first looked at it, we said x cannot be a 2. So because that was removable, we are going to say there's a hole at x equaling 2 rather than a vertical asymptote. What this graph is going to look like 
If we were to graph y equals x plus 2, it's going to have a y-intercept of 2 and a slope of 1. Yes? But where x equals 2, there'd be a little hole in the graph. So we have a line with just a little hole in it. Okay, we'll talk more about those tomorrow. All right, your assignment is listed there, and I have uh, handed out graph paper. Let me know if you have questions.